What is going on guys? It's the John Gasm coming at you today with a conspiracy theory about one of the arguably best Marvel movies to have ever been made. I am of course talking about Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, when it was first announced that this was gonna be the next Marvel movie coming out, I really wasn't that excited. After all, I had never really heard of Guardians of the Galaxy, honestly I'm more of a mainstream superhero type of guy. But honestly, after seeing this movie in theaters this weekend, I was blown away. In my opinion, it's probably the best Marvel movie to have come out in recent years. And before I get started on this theory, I want to warn you guys that if you haven't seen it, first of all, go see it. But also, in this video, I am going to be spoiling certain parts of the movie for you, including a very sweet moment in the end. So, please, if you haven't seen it, don't let this video ruin it. Don't let me be the reason that you're not excited to see it. Go see it, and then watch the video. So you guys who have seen the movie probably remember, as it was kind of a major part, that Peter Quill's mother liked to make him mix tapes. The tapes basically just featured really good music from back in her day. But as we all should know, making mixtapes back in the day was way, way more difficult than burning CDs is today. You had to kind of plot out all of the songs that you wanted on the CD in advance. Usually the songs were put there in a certain order. And every song that was included on the mixtape was probably sentimental in some way, shape, or form. Keeping that in mind, let's take a look at the songs that Peter Quill's mother included on Awesome Mix Volume 1. Because when you look at them, it's almost as if the names of the tracks tell their own story. Starting off from track number one, we have Hooked on a Feeling. After that, we have Go All the Way, then Spirit in the Sky. After that, we have Moon Age Daydream, Fooled Around and Fell in Love, I'm Not in Love, I Want You Back, Come and Get Your Love, Cherry Bomb, Escape, the Pina Colada song, and Oh Child. Looking at the names of those songs, it's almost as if you're reading the stages to a love story. And according to Reddit user Rogue Goat, the mixtape does tell a story. It tells the story of the romance between Peter Quill's mother and father, Meredith, and a guy we're going to call Steve for the sake of avoiding spoilers. Now before we dive in and interpret the meanings of the songs, let's really quick answer the question, why would Meredith make Peter a CD to explain to him the romance between her and his father? The thing is, as everybody who's watching this video right now should know, Peter's mother died when he was very young of cancer. That being said, she probably realized that she wasn't going to be around long enough for Peter to mature. And because of that, he wouldn't necessarily understand the significance of the relationship between her and his father. Because of this, she made a mixtape that kind of told the story for her. And now, let's dive into the songs and see what they mean. Now the first two songs on the track are Hooked on a Feeling and Go All the Way. This kind of describes the mood when Meredith and Steve first meet. When Steve and Meredith first met, it was basically just physical attraction. They knew that they had to be together, and although it just was physical attraction at first, it didn't end up being just that. The next stage of their relationship was the opening up stage, when Steve admitted to Meredith that he wasn't human. He may actually be from a galaxy far, far away, therefore, the song Spirit in the Sky comes into play. He's from the sky, he's from outer space, he's not from Earth. Despite that though, Meredith's feelings for Steve did not go away and she was still really, really into him. The song Moon Age Dream could possibly, possibly, refer to a short range trip they took where he kind of showed her all of the wonders of the universe, whether they left the galaxy or even left the planet or not. He taught her all about his world and her own, and because of that she was falling even more in love with him. The next two tracks on the mixed tape are Fooled Around and Fell in Love and I'm Not in Love. This could possibly describe the mindset of both Meredith and Steve respectively. She was just expecting a fun hookup but ended up having really strong feelings for him and Steve refused to admit to himself that he was in love with a human. Now if you look at the next song, I Want You Back, that kind of insinuates that Steve and Meredith had a bit of a falling out, probably because of the fact that Steve would not admit that he had feelings for Meredith the same way that she had feelings for him. Even though it was hard for him to admit it, Steve did finally say those three magic words to Meredith and they made up. 
Now the next song on the tape, Come and Get Your Love, could mean one of two things. It could possibly just represent an extended period of time between Steve and Meredith where they were truly happy with each other, or it could also represent either the time where Peter had been conceived or shortly after he had been given birth to. Now the next stage of songs is called the separation stage. The first song that we have in this group is called Cherry Bomb, which is definitely a different tone from the rest of the CD or rest of the tape. According to our writer here, Cherry Bomb could possibly represent just how unexpected some things in life are. For example, Steve may have been called away from Earth to some outer space business. To really gather that meaning, you would have to look very closely into the lyrics and the tone of the song. But Steve was leaving and he couldn't bring Meredith or Peter with him and because of that, Meredith became extremely angry and felt like she was losing everything and there really wasn't much that she could do about it. If you listen to the song Cherry Bob, it's very, very angsty. However, despite the fact that Meredith was really angry with Steve and the circumstances they had been put in, he managed to calm her down and they were both forced to accept the fact that they could not be together forever. This is where the next song, Escape, in parentheses, the peanut colada song comes in where instead of being depressed that they couldn't be together forever they were just going to make the best out of a bad situation and enjoy each other's company the best that they could it's a happy time period for them but they know that it will not last forever now the very last song on the mixtape is oh child don't know why i said it like that oh child kind of represents the final moment between meredith and steve the moment where he promises that even though he is leaving, he will come back for her and Peter so they can be a family together. It's a sad moment with the promise of a happier future, and although it may not come very soon, they do have a chance to be happy together in the end. Now that is the end of the initial theory. Something that I also wanted to take into consideration is the fact that the first song on the mixtape volume 2 is the song Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Now Meredith gives the tape to Peter as she is passing away and she told him, listen to this when I'm no longer around. Now the song Ain't No Mountain High Enough is a very popular song saying that despite whatever the situation is, I will always be there for you. We can kind of relate this song over to Meredith's death and kind of gather from that that what she was saying to Peter was, no matter what our situation is, even when I'm gone, I will always be watching over you. In my opinion, the song Ain't No Mountain High Enough has the easiest interpretation in terms of all of the other songs that she's put on the first mix. It has a very obvious and significant meaning to their situation, so keeping in mind the fact that she picked this song to represent their situation, it's not too far-fetched to believe that the other songs that she picked out are there to tell a story as well. However, despite all of this evidence, there really is no 100% correct interpretation of these mixtapes. Therefore, if you disagree with what Rogue Goat said or my interpretation of Ain't No Mountain High Enough, feel free to comment it in the comment section down below. Just so you guys know, if you would like to listen to some of the samples from what's on the mixtape, Disney actually put it on the iTunes store, which is pretty sweet. But I will also link to you guys in the description below a playlist of all of the songs featured on Awesome Mix Volume 1 and the first track of Awesome Mix Volume 2. And that is it. That is all I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'm going to ask you guys to do me a couple favors, including rating, commenting, and subscribing. And if you want to be a super fan and stay in touch with what I'm doing between videos, you can always follow me on Instagram or Twitter or like my Facebook fan page. I got links to all of those in the description down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you very soon. Stay beautiful, stay awesome, and stay fresh.